Bulginaka, do you know that cybercrime is becoming a growing problem in Fiji? Cybercrime is defined as a crime in which a computer is the object of the crime, such as hacking and spam. Cybercrime is also cyberbullying and using fake profiles to cause panic and spread false news. If you're involved in this or know anyone who's committing these crimes, report them immediately. I'm Polly. And I'm Peter. We host the Traffic Jam Show on City FM. From 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. every weekday. Do, do the, the right, right thing. Lack of Fiji in this bulletin, COVID-19 takes its toll on Fijian economy. Garlic supply among the first to feel the virus effects. And parents say bullying culture starts at home. From the studios of FBC Suba, Edwin Nan. First this morning, four people are being monitored for COVID-19 in Fiji. A health ministry statement confirms all four are in strict isolation and in a stable condition while they are now awaiting test results. A 15-month-old girl developed respiratory symptoms in Suva after arriving from the United States of America on Wednesday. A 37-year-old Fijian woman returning from a trip to Italy was flagged at Nandi Airport yesterday. A 3-year-old Fijian boy and his mother, a 26-year-old, developed respiratory systems yesterday after returning from Bali and Singapore. The public are advised not to be alarmed as the ministry is proactively taking action in response to this global outbreak. Fiji's economic growth will take a hit later this year due to the global impacts of the COVID-19 outbreak. The current forecast is at 1.7%, but the Reserve Bank anticipates the domestic impact of the coronavirus will be hardest felt in the tourism sector due to uncertainties and risks around global travel. Local businesses will soon feel the effects of the disruption to China's supply chain. The Reserve Bank is consulting various industries to get an idea of what's coming since most businesses source goods from China. We see from other countries eh, that are already impacted. And like we are tied to a lot of these trading partner countries, so if it does impact them, Australia, New Zealand, it will flow through and impact us. Fijians could soon start to pay more for their garlic as the impact of COVID-19 grasps the world. Fears are that China, the biggest supplier of garlic to the world, will cut supply. Local distributor Turners and Growers says all its imports from China are on hold and their last shipment was before the COVID-19 outbreak. Fiji may have to source garlic from expensive markets like New Zealand, leaving the consumers feeling the pinch. New World Supermarket expects their supply to be affected soon. So we haven't got any indications from China saying that they're going to stop supply of not only garlic but any other products yet, as of yet. In terms of sourcing garlic from anywhere else outside of China, we don't know. If we do go to New Zealand and Australia, the prices will go through the roof. And um, I don't know if the affordability will be there or not. A massive 6,594 cases of bullying were recorded in schools around the country last year alone. This has hit hard. And for some parents who say that it is time for reflection as everything begins at home. If you are approaching your children in a violent way, then they can also do it by bullying other children, especially in boarding schools. So be careful on how you talk to your children at home. Some of the children do not want to go to school and they have a reason. And some parents are just forcing them to go to school. They should have time to talk with their children. The whole problem here is that most parents are full-time on Facebook and do not have time to deal with these issues. Psychologist Sarah Kuruleda, excuse me, Selena Kuruleda says it's time for a holistic approach to address the issue. In all schools, we need to be looking at it. Uh, reviewing it and getting our parents on board because obviously this this behavior is being learned from somewhere and the fact that people have not only committed this behavior or assaulted someone else but they've also filmed it they they obviously think that something they're doing is right suva schools recorded 1280 cases of bullying in primary and secondary while Nosori schools had the high, second highest with 1,260 cases, followed by Dakaundrove with 1,052 cases. Bullying makes up 24% of the total cases of violence in schools. 
More than 80,000 farmers have been captured in the 2020 Agriculture Census. However, the figures are still being finalized. Agriculture Ministry Permanent Secretary Ritesh Das says the teams are going through data cleansing and validation as teams are still returning from isolated areas. Das says their target was 71,000. However, preliminary figures show that they surpassed this target. So, uh, so over the next couple of weeks, you know, we'll, we'll obviously, you know, uh, firm that and complete that exercise. After which, you know, we'll be able to share uh, with the rest of the stakeholders around specific timelines when the information and the, and the, and the data will be made available. The Fiji Society for the Blind has discovered through its awareness campaigns that some children with disabilities are being deprived of education. Chief Executive Barbara Farouk says children are being kept at home and this restricts them from reaching their full capability. Farouk says they want parents to understand that there are educational opportunities available for children with disabilities. They should come forward. They shouldn't hide them in their homes because it's not going to help them. For example, we had a uh, case in Latoka where it took us about 11 years to uh, convince the parent to bring the child to the school. So when they brought him, he stayed here for two weeks and then, because he's, he's so used to staying home, just put them in front of the TV all day and you know, all those, uh, he couldn't stay. Customers with the Bank of the South Pacific could face service disruptions due to a dispute between the bank and its employees' union. Both parties have reached a deadlock in negotiations over pay increases and bonus payouts. The Fiji Bank and Finance Sector Employees' Union claims it will exhaust all avenues available to see that staff who are part of the union get what they want. National Secretary Salesh Naidu says action can range from picketing, strike action, stop work, slow work, protests and marches. What we have been told by BSP is that this is driven by PNG and uh, management is unable to stop this issue. So we have told them that if you can't stop them, then we have to activate our strategies to make sure that uh, we don't accept such a low rated increase. In the Fiji Roads Authority is trying to complete work on Queen Elizabeth Drive in Nasese Suva by the end of next year. Chief Executive Jonathan Moore says the termination of the contractor hired for the Suva Arterial Road Upgrading Project 2 has backed up work by 15 months. He adds that work on QEB Drive will run in conjunction with rehabilitation of Ratusukuna Road. Moore also highlights the current progress along Queen Elizabeth Drive. The wooden posts out into the bay, they're forming a temporary shelter for a uh, workspace for the, for the teams who are going to build a new seawall and shift the bridge about 12-15 metres out into the sea, straighten the road and make it wider. Uh, that's ongoing now. Less than a year after opening its first shop in Suva, Weta Coffee has opened a second outlet. Owned by Bentley Fishers, the husband and wife team have made a significant investment banking on the growing coffee and kava culture in the capital. Co-owner Darren Fisher says with 16 new employees in this venture, Weta offers a service and cuisine that's become their signature brand. We've seen an opportunity uh, to expand and um, it's a good location, um, bigger premises. We're also diversifying the business from uh, you know, coffee to, and a grab-and-go to a kitchen, a fully functioning commercial kitchen. Coming up, Terry Otamani joins Fiji 7s for Vancouver Tournament and Lotoka aims to maintain winning run. Welcome back. Fiji Airways Fijian 7th utility back Levi Ikanikonda Tamandamu has returned home after injuries sustained on his ankle. 
in the Los Angeles final against South Africa. Amanyasi Tuimamba will also return home to join his family who are mourning the loss of his grandfather. The Asawa sensation attributes much of his rugby and professional success to his grandfather. The two arrived home earlier this morning, uh, early yesterday rather. Meanwhile, Tambandabu player Terry Otamani has now joined the squad in Vancouver. Fiji's first match is against Wales on Sunday at 7.37 a.m., Canada at 10.49 a.m., and France at 2.33 p.m. You can catch all the action live on FBC TV. Swire shipping Fijian Warriors utility forward Christopher Minimbi believes the best team will come out on top for the World Rugby Pacific Challenge. Though Samoa has yet to win against Fiji in the WRPC, Minimbi says they will not be taking the Samoans for granted. Fiji last met Samoa A in the 2019 competition, thrashing them 48-16. Uh, it'll be tough. It'll be tough. Uh, they're a very physical team. They've also got you know, their, own, uh, their own style of play. and. Uh, It'll be a good competition and hopefully the best team will come out on top. The first match kicks off on Friday where Junior Japan takes on Tonga A at 2.30 p.m. at Suva's ANZ Stadium, followed by the Fijian Warriors playing Samoa A at 5 p.m. Maris Brothers High School will be marching into the semi-final this weekend with one goal in mind to strip their counterparts Nasinu Secondary of the title. The side made it to the final in 2018 and are hoping for a turnaround this time. Benina Rakautonga caught up with the team today. The County Quilla boys will be up against the Southeastern Zone Under-19 champions this Saturday. Uh, for, for this week, uh, we're just working on our uh, two things we're just working on. Our defense and uh, our, our discipline. That's all. We can uh, win over Nasinu. Just to work on our discipline and defense. Nasinu Secondary, on the other hand, will stick to its game plan, which has brought them victory in the past few games. The game last week was good and they are big plays, so this week we will try and prepare so we may be able to win through to the finals. We don't have a change in the game plan, we want to use the same strategy we have been using to work together and communicate. Expect a tough encounter this weekend as undefeated Nasinu Secondary School and Morris Brothers High School go head-to-head -head in the semi-finals at the St. Maslin Grounds on Saturday. Venina Rakautonga, FBC Sports. Lotoka aims to maintain its unbeaten run against Suva on their fifth Vodafone Premier League match on Sunday. With no head coach to guide them during training, Lotoka football president Shalendra Prasad is optimistic the side will put up a good performance against the capital city side on their home turf. Wary of what Suva will bring, Prasad adds the players will need to perform to the best. Suva has got uh, fast strikers, so we will try to see that we can stop their uh, strikers and see that they don't, they don't score goals. And uh, likewise, uh, we have to pull our socks up to see that uh, we try to keep our unbeaten record at our home field. Afternoon or evening showers and possible thunderstorms are forecast for the group. Expect a mostly fine morning. And that's your FPC Morning News. Remember to join us at 1 p.m. and 7 p.m. for our major bulletin. For these stories and others, you can also tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM. That's it from me for now. Have a good morning. हमारे खूबसूरत देश बीजी में चाइल्ड अब्यूज की घटनाएं आए दिन बढ़ रही हैं। क्यों बच्चों का मासूम बचपन अब्यूज का शिकार हो जाता है अपने बच्चों की सुरक्षा का खास ख्याल रखें। उनसे बातचीत करें उनके दोस्तों के बारे में जानें। आज के बच्चे देश का भविष्य है मैं दीप्ति और मैं मोनिश आपके हम सफर शामिल हो जाए हमारे साथ मंडे टू फ्राइडे फाइव फोर्टी फाइव एम सी टेन एम तक रेडियो फीजी टू देश की धड़कन आरोप